Lately, I've been thinking of going back to an adventure bike. It's a long story, but let's start with today's video of my weekend with the Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro, super opposite bike from my Interceptor and pretty much any Royal Enfield. Now on cruise control. Just to see what I'm missing, if I'm missing anything. This is the story of that weekend. Enjoy the ride. Hey guys, what's up? I am on the Vespa today on my way to my friend, my riding buddy Carlos's place to borrow his Tiger 900 Rally Pro. So like, you know, zero to 100 real quick. So my interceptor right now is in the shop at Ingenco for some paint protection. So it was the perfect time to uh, take Carlos up on his offer to borrow Tiger 900. So as you know, this is a higher class of bike bigger, more tech, more capable, more expensive than any bike I really had the chance to ride. And also, honestly, lately, uh, with the recently concluded uh, FJ Mountain Cross event that a lot of my friends joined, uh, I've been feeling a lot of uh, ADV bike envy. You know, I'm feeling that hankering to have like a real travel, more off-roady capable bike again. So it will be a nice uh, nice opportunity to see if I'm really missing much. Honestly, because let's be frank, I have really barely scratched the surface of uh, what the, intersect the Interceptor I have built is capable of. Trying to answer my own question of, do I really need an adventure bike? Or do I just need to upgrade my skills and courage and use the bike that I already have? This is insane. The traffic on a Saturday afternoon is so much worse than it is during weekdays on the same stretch of road at around rush hour. This is Edsa southbound. Oh my gosh. Wow, dude, this is insane. It's so hot and the traffic is so bad. And of all people to bump into, I'm bumping into <laughs> EJ's right behind me on his MT-07. As EJ, <laughs> you think Manila's big, but then you just bump into one of your <laughs> close riding buddies while stuck in traffic. This is so funny. Shout out, Idol EJ, national skills champion. <laughs> yeah. So guys, thanks to Carlos, we got the tiger for. A day. Woohoo! Okay, bye bye, bye bye. All right. All right. Wow, this is so much more bike than I'm used to. So it's pretty skinny between the legs. I'm just not used to having such a so much bike. <laughs> so much bike to handle. So yet, yeah. So fittingly. Our first ride on this will be a commute, a commute across the city in pretty heavy traffic. So uh, it'll give me a chance to really get used to controlling the bike at low speeds. Man, there is no denying that even though the Interceptor is, you know, not much lighter than this bike, it really does feel like a small bike compared to a larger middleweight adventure bike like the Tiger 900 Rally Pro, even in its lowered form. So even though it's lowered and I have a good reach to the ground, I can still feel the top heaviness and the mass of the bike when it starts to tip over. So it is definitely a bike that uh, requires more attention when you ride than something like an Interceptor. Really, this is my first, gonna be my first meaningful time on a bike this size. So far, I'm still a little, just slightly, slightly nervous. I'm not having a hard time riding it, but I'm not able to, obviously I'm not able to do things as confidently as I would on the Interceptor. And even just getting used to how sharp the rear brake is, for example, and the position of that rear brake. Oh, and there's quite a bit of heat now coming from the engine as well. But in terms of comfort, yeah, what can I say? It's an adventure bike. On this road, on the Vespa, you could feel every bump. Now it's like I'm riding a car. It's pretty plush, it's great. 
So in that regards, even though it's a heavier bike, you will still feel less travel fatigue for long miles than on a bike like the Interceptor, which is, you know, we all know that, but it's different experiencing it firsthand and really feeling the difference with your butt and your back. Well, I can't imagine, say, having to daily a bike that's this big and hot. But yeah, so in road mode, the power is like totally manageable. There's nothing scary at all. Ooh, but once you start pulling, yeah, standing up on this thing is amazing. I mean, wow, the ergonomic standing up is perfect. Like, it's absolutely perfect. Like, it feels like you were really meant to stand up on this bike. It tips eagerly as well. I find it uh, quite maneuverable. This is by far going to be the most premium bike, the biggest and most premium bike that I will be taking on a ride out of town. So really excited to, to ride it tomorrow. Being an adventure bike actually like in road mode, the power is kind of just nicely, nicely calm. It's not snatchy at all. Very easy to manage the throttle in traffic. It's amazing, really, the contrast between how this road felt coming in on the Vespa and how it feels now on a big adventure tourer like this one. Okay guys, at this point, I have to admit the engine is becoming unbearably hot because of uh, riding in traffic. Woo! Oh my god, that is hot. And also, I'm very glad to report that at my current moderate, low moderate skill level that I'm able to uh, filter pretty well with the bike. Definitely the power is just right in road mode for riding in traffic. And uh, as, actually because it's so tall, the benefit, even though it's wide, is that I am above most of the side mirrors, which makes it a little bit easier given the size of the bike to filter. It's definitely easier to filter than I thought it would be. I've ridden it through traffic for like I don't know 15-20 minutes now as you say like the thing I need to get used to the most is it the size or the weight it's how sharp the brakes are compared to any Royal Enfield bike and so I have to modulate brake pressure with this bike one finger one finger modulation to get a very smooth stop and not surprise myself and put myself at risk of dropping the bike the rear brake of this feels like the front brake of my interceptor what the heck made it home with the tiger in one piece and as i said um it was it wasn't actually that hard it feels very maneuverable for a motorcycle with a 21 inch front wheel you know 220 kilos so it is quite a bit heavier and feels a lot more top heavy than my interceptor but you know if you just have good technique before we go let's do a nice little walk around the bike so you can appreciate it proper european premium bike this is the rally pro version as you can see we got our 21 inch front wheel these are scorpion rallies which is a aftermarket tire this is not what it comes with You've got your hepco and becker crash guards along with your bark busters again these are aftermarket these are aftermarket the double take adventure mirrors and aftermarket got your nice triumph top box and you've got your rear 17 inch scorpion rally these are tubeless spoked wheels again brembo brakes all right you've got off-road foot pegs as you can see here a center stand this bike is actually really easy to get onto the center stand it surprised me okay what else do we have we have our controls here heated grips heated seat uh aftermarket auxiliary lights over here quickly take a look at some of the electronics we have here of course you got your cruise control daytime running light passing light this changes the riding modes your horn your self-canceling turn signal here's your starter and kill switch and there's your hazard light okay so if we move this joystick over here 
navigate so you got your uh, tire pressure monitoring uh, display controls there tack you have your GPS so you can connect your phone here via Bluetooth you even intercom trip meters fuel status your range and your average and your current and yeah then by pressing here on this button you can access the riding mode so right now we are on road mode we can go to sport off-road off-road pro and then rider is just custom rain mode then back to road mode so you have lots of modes here because this is the rally pro version now if you press the home button here on the right these are your menus with the various settings and here in riding modes is where you can customize the settings for each mode let's say if we go to off-road pro see you can change the abs throttle mapping traction control okay so yeah that's just a quick walk around overview first impressions of this bike and i will really get to know it better on a longer ride tomorrow and there's not going to be any off-road but you know i'm really just trying to get into the idea of a totally different kind of bike totally different from any royal enfield it has as you can see so many electronics so many features significantly bigger engine bigger bike and such a really comfortable adventure tour with some off-road capability so yeah, uh, whole thing is like, I don't plan to buy a bike like this. I'm not the target market, I can't afford it. But I really just wanna understand, I guess, what bikes like this are all about, if I really do want an adventure tour in the future. And yeah, just kind of expand my uh, ride XP vocabulary so I can share it with you. Okay, see you tomorrow, guys. And well, here I am, guys. We are at Shell. Slicks, and I've just ridden this from my house <clears throat> via EDSA, um, from my house in Quezon City via EDSA, not via Skyway, because one, I woke up super early, and two, I wanted to test the suspension and the manners on EDSA, and like, just wow, I have to say, like, it's my first time to experience this level of plushness. If you've commuted on EDSA on like a scooter, an underbone, or even a standard bike, even like the Interceptor, then you know that it's such an unpleasant place to ride but underneath a suspension of the tiger like what edsa like i really just I, I couldn't feel any of the bumps on the road and so far i'm amazed and because of that you know i was able to take edsa at a, a higher speed than you would on like a non-adventure bike so yeah that part of having a premium adventure bike good as advertised i'm pretty amazed so yeah Let's wait for the guys to arrive and we will proceed with today's Sunday ride. All right, guys, we're off. It's just me, Martin, and Carlos. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful morning. <laughs> okay, we've got the bike in sport mode now. another highway stretch so yeah so what Carlos and I were discussing just now is just that the Triumph transmission is just so smooth and um, uh, the power here on the three-cylinder engine on the Tiger is like basically super linear all the way to the top the 9,000 rpm so it's a very very manageable bike to ride even in sport mode ergonomically Carlos was just saying also just now um, it's a little bit, if you have short arms, you have to sit up with your crotch pretty much on the tack so that you're not reaching far, too far forward. So it is a bike for a larger individual, a taller individual. Okay guys, I'll check that out. I'm on cruise control, no hands, so weird. <laughs> so I'm just steering with peg weight. What a concept, right? Woo! 
Wow, it's crazy. You really don't feel the speed. Your sense of speed on a bike this size with this much power is so different. There's nothing scary about going at 100 on a road like this. Especially because with the suspension. So it's actually here on this kind of provincial highway where we're overtaking, weaving in and out that I really feel the difference in power. Like it's just so effortless. Much easier to keep up or catch up. Ugh. It's a hoot, I really have to say. Like such a different way of riding. Ah. All right. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> Big hole. Yeah, these side roads are so bad. Cool house. Oh, there it is. Okay, guys, it's a destination with a little clock tower. Ashong's Caviteño restaurant. Nice place. Fancy. Bikes are parked up. We are the first, very, very first customers. We are opening the restaurant here at the new location of Ashong Habitenya Restaurant. Let's check it out. Really nice space. Wow, oh, it's huge. Yeah. Let's go out. All right, good morning. There's a food. Yempo silog. Tap, tap silog. And farmer's onion. breakfast. Farmer's breakfast for Farmer Martin. Farm Martin for short. <laughs> what? to leave the tiger on my way home on the Vespa now and I'll give you my thoughts on this whole experience after this okay so the whole context of this video isn't really like for a straight-up review of the tiger 900 rally pro I mean I don't know how it compares to the competition in its class in the middleweight class so it's sort of like at the heavy end of the middleweight class you know like with the t7s v stroms or you can maybe say the lighter end just under the liter by class so I really have pretty much no experience on those bikes except for the Tiger 900 Rally Pro. So my context is coming from somebody that mainly rides uh, bikes like the Royal Enfield Interceptor. You know, bikes that are less expensive, less powerful, much less complicated, and particularly, you know, standard bikes, not adventure bikes. And I can confirm that, wow, it is such a different experience. In a lot of ways better, objectively speaking objectively speaking far superior I mean, you're talking about a bike that's like almost three times the price of the interceptor it is the rally pro which is the top of the line version of the tiger 900 pillowy ride like crazy you just barely feel the road under you it sucks up everything super nice linear power so easy to keep up as you saw with my friends on like the XSR 700, Martin, he's a pretty fast rider. And Carlos, pretty good rider on his Thruxton, the fastest bike in our group. The way I put it was like, we were the fastest bikes on the road, but it was so easy to ride the Tiger on the highway and on long stretches of road. I barely had to think about, I could be thinking about what I'm going to have for dinner or what I'm going to do for the week and still be keeping up that pace and still be able to overtake and weave through traffic. It really is such a luxurious motorcycling experience. I understand why people like can cross continents on bikes like this. And it's not just the comfort and the power. It's also just like the ability to like put a bunch of luggage on it without really ruining the way the bike looks and handles without having to do too much like jewelry rigging of of stuff to the bike. I loved all of that. And so I guess what I figured out is, you know, so do 
I want to switch to an adventure bike. Not anytime soon. Uh, if you've ridden the Interceptor, if you love bikes like Royal Enfields, there's still no substitute for the character of these bikes and something that's very hard to describe unless you ride them and unless you ride them regularly. There's just something very likable, something very tactile. You know, these bikes, unlike Tiger 900, you know, these aren't ride by wire. Every, almost everything on those bikes is still pretty much mechanical, very old fashioned style of, to use the words of Royal Enfield, pure motorcycling. And so honestly, I think in the future, what would be great is to own a mid-size adventure bike, nothing bigger than that. So something like the Tiger 900 would be the biggest, but more like a Tenere 700 to have, you know, like great travel bike uh, that can do some off-road and paired with a bike like the Interceptor or pretty much the Interceptor, which is still a bike I want to own until I'm old. I'll only upgrade from the Interceptor once I feel like I've truly maxed out its capabilities, which I haven't. Fine, the Interceptor has less power, it's way less comfortable, but you know, I exist as the rider to make all of these adjustments and I can make these adjustments without having to spend barely any extra money, although I will upgrade my suspension soon, and while building my skill. My time with the Tiger this weekend has just been an absolute pleasure and definitely gonna borrow it again, take it for some travel so you guys can also be along for the ride and see how I handle it in different situations, maybe do more off-road and do more twisties which we weren't able to do today. I see what I'm missing. I can live without it, but definitely in the future, I would love to have a capable middleweight adventure bike. And that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next run.